everybody, George here, and welcome back to the channel. So, uh, several people have asked me in the comments section um, what happened to the sword tails that uh, I um, had to uh, collect, and uh, the pregnant ones anyway, the females that were pregnant. I did get all four of them last night, but the one that was most pregnant, the one that had uh, the most obvious amount of fry um, somehow escaped out of the little um, breeder box last night. So I did have to recapture her. The problem is trying to catch sword tails in a very heavily planted tank with a lot of stone and hardscape and wood and that kind of thing is just impossible unless there's a secret that I have, and that is catching them at night, and uh, that is very, very effective. Now, as you can see, I do have my breeder box set up, and uh, believe it or not, earlier today when I set this up, I did have one of these females dropped three or four babies, I can't remember how many it was, but three or four babies down into that lower area. Unfortunately, one of them got back into the top and I witnessed his demise by being eaten by one of the other females. So, I am uh, learning very quickly that I had the tray at the bottom upside down and he was able to get, make his way back to the top. So I have fixed that problem, and I have been taking the babies out as they go and putting them into the tank that we talked about um, yesterday on that video. So, yes, I do have the breeder box set up in here. I do have three females in here. I released one female because she didn't appear to be pregnant once I got her in that box and I examined her very closely. I didn't see anything that would tell me that she was for sure pregnant. Now you can see these guys when I do a close up here. These two, uh, two females on this side and the female on the opposite side. There is a divider in here. Uh, they are definitely pregnant and I'm hoping that over the next day or two they're going to release their fry and I'm going to put an end to this because like I said before I'm not a breeder and I'm not trying to be a breeder and uh, I don't want to uh, get into this situation again so I'll probably be, be removing either the males or the females I haven't decided which yet uh, likely the females simply because the males are a little interesting to look at and uh, add the same amount of color to the, the tank so um, that's probably what I'll end so up doing. So a couple of pieces of new information that I do have regarding uh, breeding a uh, couple of things number one um, when fish are nervous or stressed out they can stop releasing their fry and uh, I don't know how they control that exactly, but for some reason they are able to uh, stop releasing their fry and then they go back to it at a certain point. Um, typically they release their fry at night or early in the morning uh, is my understanding, but it can literally happen any time of day. So as I said, I'm not interested in the breeding aspect of this. The only reason I'm doing this is because I allowed this to happen. I probably should have known better, but I am being a good uh, fish owner by making sure that I see this through. And I'll likely give these babies, with the exception of maybe six or seven of them that I do have planned for another tank, if I can grow them out, I will give them to um, a uh, fish store that is a good friend of mine who says that they're willing to take them however many I want to bring in so I don't know how many will get out of these um, I don't even know what the average size um, brood is from uh, a fish uh, that does produce live bearing fry so I'm gonna bone up on that a little bit over the next few days and have some pretty good ideas as to what I'm dealing with here. 
and in doing so I'm going to be learning obviously quite a bit about breeding. Uh, I'm not going to take it up as a hobby obviously I told you that but uh, I do want to see this through. Now what I've been doing like I said is taking them over to the hospital tank and we're going to go there in just a second and take a look at what's going on there. So as I said yesterday, this basically is a hospital tank that I generally have set up anyway. Get that out of the way there. And uh, I don't know if you can see the fry that are in here, but uh, they're basically hanging out in the corner at the top there and uh, by the heater. That seems to be the spot that uh, is the most popular spot as you can see, there is one right here in the front as well. So I think at this point here, with the three or four that I added today, I think we have, we had 10 yesterday. I was mistaken in that. I thought I counted 11, but we had 10. So we have, I think 13 or 14 at the most uh, fry in this tank. That's not a lot, I know that. But uh, for me, it's interesting just because it happened. So. Uh, and again, I do only have a um, stone in here with a heater. It's basically just something where I've been cleaning the water every single day to make sure that these fish have ideal conditions in which to live. Now, one of the problems I am having is if you look back here, there's a grate right in here, and they are small enough to fit through there, and they do tend to do that. They will go back there they will come back out and that kind of thing. So you have to make sure uh, that you are getting some food back there. Now I've been using this uh, cobalt. Um, you know, it's a it's got probiotics and all kinds of really good rich stuff in here. And what I'm reading basically says that that's really all you need. You don't have to have anything that is uh, you know, really fancy for swordfish. Now these are sword tail fish, excuse me. Um, you know, if you were breeding um, egg layers and they hatch, uh, of course you do need some other equipment and uh, also some specialty foods uh, to keep them going. You, you can't do that. Uh, with flake food. It just doesn't work. But these guys here are born fairly good size and uh, take to the flake food right away. So that has not been an issue. We come back, we're going to look a little bit closer at this tank and the fry in here if we can get a look at them. So when I came in here, the light was off. So these fish were pretty much uh, in a sleep mode. But you can see if you look down in here, there are fry running around they're kind of waking up right now and uh, over on this side here you can see and uh, I can't get a really good angle on the top but there's one in particular that must have been born from another brood of fish because um, he is quite a bit larger than the rest of these so um, as you can see there's some over on this side too right in here um, Anyways, he, he's quite a bit bigger and seems to be more active and more lively than the rest of them. So I'm guessing that um, he's had a better start than the rest of them and was born earlier, probably from something that I didn't catch in that first female that I released this morning because her eggs were pretty much, or not her eggs, I mean her fry were pretty much released. She wasn't... Uh, even looking pregnant any longer so um, she may have been the one that had the first bunch that got back into the area behind uh, my tank as you can see there's one right here this little guy and uh, sorry about the jitteriness of the camera but I'm trying to hold it and show you there's another one right here and uh, quite a range of color to them I see the orange and the black in them, but I also see some yellow, which may turn to orange at some point. I do see some yellow in some of them, might be a recessive gene of some kind, uh, that uh, it's kind of interesting. 
Anyways, I don't want to go on and on about these uh, fish, but I did want to show you that I was taking care of them and that uh, I am working towards uh, getting them raised up. And uh, I will, like I said, I will put some of them in one of my tanks uh, and use them for that and anything else that uh, develops in the breeder box which we'll go back to right now and talk about that a little bit more. So I don't know the exact gestation period for the fry. Uh, this girl is ready to pop though. Uh, she's been going up and gulping water. Uh, that was one of the things that I read that indicated that they were very close to uh, giving birth to the fry that they have. And you can see that dark spot um, in particular behind uh, the body of the fish uh, as they're swimming here. You can see that dark spot, that's all fry in there. So uh, when you see that dark area, uh, that just means, you see the dark spot that I'm talking about right in here? This is the big mama right here. She is just ready to burst and uh, I'm hoping over the next day or two she will release her fry and I can get them all into the other tank and uh, the other two will follow shortly thereafter. Now like I said, one of these two that were in here originally, not the big girl that's in the front here, but uh, the other two were releasing fry this morning and then they just stopped. So I've read that that can happen with stress and they just hold them back until they feel like it's a safe time to do that. Of course, then they turn around and eat them, so I'm not too sure how that works, but anyways, the female that I was talking about earlier is right here. Uh, as you can see, she's not nearly as uh, uh, bloated or en engorged with uh, fry or anything right now. She's pretty much done, and... Uh, Anyway, uh, long story short is, yeah, that's kind of what's going on with these guys. I will post this video. Uh, thank you guys. Leave some uh, comments down below and uh, tell me what you think of what's going on here and uh, what we're doing with the fry at this point. I'm going to raise my camera up a little bit here so we can see the tank. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think about this or if you have any experience with these particular kind of fish, sword tails, and I'm sure mollies and guppies and uh, several other breeds out there are very similar. In fact, I've heard that mollies and sword tails can basically breed with each other and that happens all the time. So. Um, Anyway, um, just a good update. If you guys are interested in it, leave your comments down below. Hit that like button. Also, subscribe and share with your friends. I sure do appreciate it. Um, got a lot of stuff coming up, and I want to talk about that for a minute before we get done with this video. Uh, we're going to be doing that big discus tank. Uh, that is in the family room downstairs or the great room, whatever you want to call it. I call it a family room because that's kind of the way I grew up, but I guess nowadays we call them great rooms. But uh, anyway, um, we're going to be doing that. We're going to be taking that on over the next couple of weeks here. Again, things are really slow in the mail. Um, trying to get some of the last things I need to get that tank overhauled and redone, and I'm just don't have enough stuff to really do this. I have some more rock that I need. I got one uh, package of the rock uh, that I'm going to be using on that and the second pack they were out of it so I'm a little bit of a back order on that and uh, anyways long story short is we got a lot of great content coming up. I'm trying to put out a video every two days here just to kind of keep you guys up to date on what's going on with uh, my little world of fish here and uh, we'll be doing a lot more things too as well there's uh, several more tanks that i'll be setting up oh and my son's tank we're going to be overhauling that uh, that's going to be fun because 
This tank is really in need of an overhaul. It's over a year old and it's gotten to the point where it just really needs some attention and uh, we're gonna do that. So we'll be doing that over the next few weeks as well. We've got all the stuff we need for that. It's just a matter of because of COVID and everything, you just gotta really kind of plan these things. You can't just kind of do them willy nilly. So anyways, thanks for joining me today. Appreciate it and we will see you on the next one. Until then, we are out.